Hi again, I'm Paul Ricketts with the South Physics Observatory. So we're going to set up today another uh, equatorial mount. Um, this one is the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Um, it's a very capable mount and can hold pretty heavy telescopes. So we have it with a 10 inch uh, Mead optical tube assembly. We're going to get that set up and do step by step for you. That way, if you're wondering how to get them set up, or if you're wondering what it's like to set them up before you buy them, then this is how you do it. Always the first thing that you want to start setting up. So once you find your location, like we've talked about before, about where you want to set things up, you can do that with anything, anytime. So these ones have quite a bit beefier tripod than the other ones. They are shorter when you're putting them in a bag, but they are much more sturdy to be able to carry them the weight of the mount. So you never want to have a tripod that is too light. That way it doesn't cause a lot of vibration in your telescope and also just doesn't fall apart when you put a lot of weight on it. Okay, so these ones have a dowel pin right here. This is what you're going to be pointing north. And this is where the, the pins for the azimuth uh, adjustment on the mount will be um, in contact with. So you want to make sure that's at north. And that right now is behind me. So you want to get kind of level for this. You don't have to get it perfectly level yet because the mount itself has a leveler on it, a leveling bubble. Okay, so now that that is there, we'll do the next step. Okay, so we're gonna take out the mount head and get it ready to put onto the tripod. So move some things out of the way and then slowly lift it out. Make sure not to grab anything on the way. And cut that part out. <laughs> All right, we're gonna set the mount right there. And then we're gonna put this pin right in there. So this is why it's good to at least have it somewhat level when you put it on. That way you can do this and it won't tip and fall off. So now I'm gonna add the spreader for the tripod onto the tripod. Okay, when you think it's tight, give the tripod a little bit of a wiggle and it'll always get a little bit looser. So you wanna make sure, do that a couple times. Be sure not to go too tight because you can break these little fingers on there and you don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to add the altitude adjustment screws in. We take these out just to be able to put it into our box and to be able to fit it in there properly. You don't have to take these off if, uh, however you're holding it, makes sense to do so. But they do add several inches of width. You want to make sure they're just about even on each side. That way you have plenty of adjustment each way when you're getting it set up. All right, so now what we want to do is uh, get it balanced, or not balanced. Now what we want to do is get it level. These ones have a little bubble level right here. So we're going to uh, move the tripod around just to get that level better. Okay. Now since the bubble is over on this side here, we're going to use the leg that is opposite of it. Try to raise that up to get that bubble to go back into the middle. So if you just watch that. And there it goes out of focus. OK, 
Okay. Good. Okay, so now that we got it close to the center for the back leg, you notice it's over that way, so we're gonna raise this leg up that direction and get it into the center there. Actually, it looks like we gotta go down on that side. So we just give it a little bit of a push, and a wiggle, and there it is. Always remember to tighten your legs back up. Otherwise, your whole mount falls off. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to put the counterweights on. The counterweight bar for this one is tucked up inside of here. Just loosen that and tighten it back up. Take off this little thumb screw here. Set that aside. And get your counterweights. So depending on how big your telescope is, the more of these that you will have to have. And so since we're using a 10 inch, we have to use three of these guys. So each one of these weighs about 20 pounds. Actually, I think these are only 11 pounds. If I remember right, I don't remember. They weigh some weight because they have mass on them. And anything with mass when it's in a gravitational field has weight. the third one on right here and move your bag out of the way so you don't trip on it so now what we have to do we're going to put the the optical tube on so you have to make sure these are out of the way but you don't want to take this all the way off otherwise it's disastrous so get it out to where it gives you plenty of room to fit the the dovetail in like I said, make sure that doesn't come off all the way. So the cool thing about this one is it can hold Vixen dovetails and Los Mondi style dovetails. So you can fit any kind of, almost any kind of optical tube on there that you want. Okay, so now we're gonna take our optical tube out of the box. You wanna slide that right in the dovetails. Sometimes it's not the most smooth operation. And then you tighten down your brackets. Make sure they're fairly tight, going back and forth. Make sure they're both tightened up. And there you go. Now you have your telescope on. So let's go to the next steps. Now we're gonna add some accessories on there. We're gonna start with the uh, finder scope. Usually what we do is put these in a little bit. That way they're not sticking out and get caught on things quite as much or bend the bracket if you accidentally smack something with it, which you should never do. Put our brackets on. Get that in there. Get it tight. Not too tight that it's hard to take off. Loosen your bolts just a little bit. Get your finder scope. 
I don't like to go too far back that way when you're looking through it, you're not smacking your head on here. Okay, so now we're gonna add our diagonal and eyepieces on here. I like using two inch eyepieces and diagonals with bigger telescopes. Because if you get the right kind of eyepieces, it maximizes the amount of field of view you can get. At a given magnification. So just like everything, start with a wide field so you can get that set up. And now that you have your accessories on, we can go through and balance the telescope. Okay, so now we're gonna try balancing the telescope, even though we will succeed. There's no try, only do. So we can undo the right ascension lock, and we notice that the telescope is pretty heavy that way. So you wanna bring it back. Pull one of these down just a little bit, being sure that you put your little stopper on before going any farther. Okay, so now we can check it again. Do the same thing. See it keep drifting. It drifts a lot faster that way than it does that way. So you bring down the middle one just a little bit. Do it again. Pretty good. Kind of stops evenly each way. We'll go down just a hair, then call it good. Now, if you don't lock this and you try moving these, and if you do it in just the wrong way, you can actually cause it to flip really quickly that way, and you don't want to do that, so make sure this is always locked when you're messing with these. Okay, so now that the right ascension is balanced, we're going to balance the declination up here. And so that's just doing it in the same way. Release your declination lock, go this way. And you can see how it wants to swing back that way. So that means we have to move the telescope tube forward a little bit. So you want to get behind it, support it from the back, release these ever so slightly and then just kind of push it up just a hair tighten those again and then check again and that is good right there so if you have any other accessories on here like later on if you decide to do some astrophotography and get a camera lens or a, just a camera. If you get a camera and a tracking scope and a bunch of uh, wires and stuff on this, you have to rebalance, otherwise your scope will not be happy and it will run terribly poor. Lee. Okay, so that's our balancing. We're gonna set up the hand controller. This one is extremely easy compared to some other telescopes because all of the wiring for the drives are inside of this. So all you gotta do is plug that in there. You gotta get the little hand controller mount. Try not to let it do that. that goes in there. You want to mount this close to the side that it is inputting into. That way you're not stretching this around too much when the telescope's moving. So now we're going to throw on power cord and then plug it into 
a little battery pack. One thing I noticed about this telescope is there's some little screws right here that like to make their way out of the hole. So eventually we'll put some Loctite or something on there to keep those in. But this goes in one direction into there, screws into that. And then what I like to do is drop this through one of these and around one time. That way if you decide to kick it, it's not going to rip it out of the telescope mount. And then you'll plug it in down there onto something else. And that's how easy the electronics are to set up on this. <laughs> 